Hi everybody, a really important topic in A2 Macroeconomic, Cost Benefit Analysis, sometimes abbreviated to CBA, I don't mean that in terms of our CBA with economics, that's never true is it? No, of course not. When well, you're watching this video, you can't have CBA for economics, but CBA sometimes is the abbreviation for it, so if I say that, you know what it means, it's not like I can't be asked with economics anymore, that will never happen. This is the definition of Cost Benefit Analysis, it's a decision making tool, decision making tool, accounting for the social costs and the social benefits of a project over time to establish a net present value. So there are some really important bits in this definition, very wordy, but very important for you to learn. The social costs and the social benefits are included. Now, whenever that word social comes, it means private and external. So for costs, the private costs and the external costs will be included. The external costs being the negative externalities. For social benefits, the private benefits and the external benefits the positive externalities will be included. But, over time, so they don't have to just be occurring right now for them to be included, they might be occurring in the future, in five years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. If they can be understood, they will be included in the cost-benefit analysis. The final goal is to establish a net present value. So when we consider all of these benefits and all of these costs, take costs away from the benefits, what is the net value, but the net present value? So even all these costs and benefits occurring in the future, what are they currently worth now? Account for all of that, work out what the net present value is. If the figure for the project is positive, it implies there are more benefits than costs, go ahead. If the figure is negative, it implies there are more costs than benefits, maybe think twice about using this money for this project. So current projects include Crossrail, HS2, the Olympic Games going back a few years, all had big cost be benefit analysis done uh, before deciding uh, whether the project should be accepted, whether public money should be used to fund these projects or not. So a key thing for you, maybe to write down right now, is to understand that the main idea for cost benefit analysis in economics is to understand whether the allocation of resources is as efficient as possible. So by doing cost benefit analysis, if the net present value figure is positive, then yes, pouring public money into such a project is worthwhile because that is the most efficient allocation of resources. We are allocating resources where there is a net benefit to society. That's a good thing, right? Whereas if the figure is negative, if we did pour money into this project, then that would actually be very allocatively inefficient because there will be a net cost to society. So that's the economics in this idea right here. And when it comes to an essay, make that very clear. Make the examiner know that you understand that this all comes back to the allocation of resources, okay? That's the idea here. On the left, I've written down the basic kind of process by which a cost-benefit analysis works. On the right, some key arguments against the cost-benefit analysis. So how does it work? Well, firstly, all the private costs, benefits, and the external costs and external benefits are identified. They're identified by whoever it is conducting the analysis. The next step, is that value judgments have to be made. And this is a very important concept, and say that in an exam. Value judgments or normative considerations, in simple English, opinions are made as to which costs and benefits to include. The next stage, stage three, is that monetary values are then attached to these costs and benefits. Now, some of these costs, especially the negative externalities, the external costs, are very difficult to put monetary values on. There are methods like shadow pricing, like the cost of compensation, like reveal preference, like cost of local residents, like lost output. These different measures can be used to put monetary values on negative externalities, and that's often what's done, depending on what the external cost is. Um, so monetary values are attached to these costs and benefits. Next, these costs and benefits are weighted, weighted according to severity. So let's say uh, in the construction of uh, the new runway ether, or the construction of, of crossroad, you expect there to be some loss of life. It's probably the worst cost imaginable. But if you expect that to happen, then that should be weighted very highly. The cost of loss of life should be weighted very, very, very strongly. So weights are attached according to severity, <coughs> good or bad. But also probabilities are applied. So take the same loss of life example. The probability of that happening might be very, very low. Okay? There might be a chance of it happening, but a very low probability. So even though it's weighted significantly, the probability of it happening is so low that actually it won't skew the final figure. So weightings and probabilities are applied. 
The next thing is that a discount rate is applied because like I said, some of these costs and benefits occur in the future and whatever happens in the future, we discount. If I ask you this question right now, would you rather have £20 right now or would you rather have it in a month's time? You'd rather have it right now. Okay? We have this kind of time preference of things happening straight away. When it comes to money, we might argue that it's a case of you know, inflation eroding it in the future. It might be a case of, well, actually, if we're saved our money right now, then actually £20 right now in the future might be, worth more, uh, might be worth more to us. So we'd rather have the money right now, given the extra value it gives us right now, than wait for the future. And that concept applies also in a CBA. If there are future costs and future benefits, then they're actually going to be worth less than if they occurred right now, in which case we need to discount them. And an appropriate discount rate is used. An interest rate is used to discount them. Now that interest rate normally is calculated based on the current yield on, on government bonds because that yield reflects expectations of inflation in the future and therefore will erode what these future costs and benefits are actually worth and will give us a present value of them. Okay, so discount rate is used to discount future costs and benefits to give us a present value on what those costs and benefits are and what they do, what that does is it gives us Two figures. It will give us a net present value of benefits and a net present value of all the costs included in this project. You take the costs away from the benefits, you then get your overall net present value. And if that net present value is positive, go ahead, efficient allocation of resources. If it's negative, don't go ahead, inefficient allocation if you did. All right. But stage six, then a sensitivity analysis is calculated. So let's take the building of a new runway at Heathrow. <coughs> Doing the cost-benefit analysis will be subject to huge assumptions, which may change, right? So let's say in this cost-benefit analysis that the makers of the analysis uh, expected there to be an increase in passenger numbers at uh, Heathrow Airport of, I don't know, 5 million a year or something. Well, that is subject to lots of different assumptions. That figure may change. And if that does change, if the figure goes up for some reason, or if it goes down for some reason in reality, then that might actually skew the final net present value figure. In which case, the sensitivity analysis done accounts for given changes and assumptions in the model. And then says, right, well, if these conditions in your model do actually change, this is how the final net present value will change. So if the sensitivity, if the sensitivity analysis done actually gives you very different net present value figures, that tells you that actually your cost-benefit analysis is subject to lots of different assumptions and forecasts that you might make. In which case, if the figures do vary quite wildly, maybe think twice about whether to go ahead with this cost-benefit analysis or not. So a sen <coughs> sensitivity analysis is a significant part of the actual project here. Okay, so all well again in theory, we've said how useful this tool can actually be in the efficiency of uh, allocating resources. But in reality, there are some major issues with the CBA, and that's why any time you kind of look at the final figure of a CBA, you need, to, you need to bear in mind that there are some issues with it. Number one, identification. Have we identified all the relevant costs and benefits, private and external, for this given project? Well, what if we've missed out some of them? What if we've decided, because of value judgment, not to include some of them? Therefore, is this an all-encompassing analysis? Maybe not. <clears throat> enumeration, have we been able to effectively attach monetary values? For some external costs and benefits, it's very hard to attach monetary values, in which case is the final MPV value that we've actually generated trustworthy? Is it accurate? Maybe not. Have we used an appropriate discount rate? That's a very, very hard thing to do. <clears throat> and in fact, the discount rate used is significant in coming to a final net present value. If you change that interest rate by 1 or 2%, you can change that final MPV significantly. Number four significant, who's actually calculating and who's actually doing the analysis? Let's say um, that it's the government doing the CBA and they are desperately for uh, building a new runway at Heathrow. Then they actually may skew some of the figures. They may use measures that actually lead to the final benefits being higher than the costs. Buyers basically may feature. So if, that's, uh, if you can see that being a problem for a given cost-benefit analysis, then talk about it bias can actually skew the final figures and may lead to a final conclusion that benefits those that are actually doing or conducting the CBA. So you can imagine if environmental groups were conducting a CBA for a new runway at Heathrow, you can imagine that they're going to actually prioritise the cost more than the other benefits. 
it may lead to a final figure being skewed at the NPV. Uh, Cost-benefit analysis uh, invoke <coughs> large costs, so there is large opportunity costs, they take a long time to work, and we can also talk about the subjectivity of the weights and probabilities applied, whether they are appropriate, how they've actually come to those weightings and probabilities, who knows, very subjective, that can again affect the final NPV value. So a very large topic here, very important one, very common large discuss based questions come on it. Make sure you learn it well, hopefully now you understand it, and always bring it back to the efficiency of resource allocation, whether on the one hand or on the other hand, and you're going to look like a star economist. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully you understand, I will see you all next time.